lights. 13-1. All right. I'll let the video begin. Hey YouTube, Ultimate Trailer 2.0 or part two. It's been about uh, 21, 22 months since I uh, uploaded the first Ultimate Tool Trailer video when I had it kind of finished. So I'll link that, maybe a card up here somewhere in the description for sure. Check that one out first. That way you can compare it to this one. You see what I changed? Changed quite a bit. There's some stuff that's still the same. So let's get into it. Um, I'm gonna run into a couple specs, so like a bunch of questions I usually get with this trailer so i'm going to lay this out and then we're going to hop into the actual you know the overview and we're not going to do all the tools and everything that's not what this is about this is to kind of give you guys anybody's looking out to build a trailer kind of like this some ideas all that good jazz this is an all aluminum american hauler 7 by 16 uh with a two foot v nose here to my uh right and to your left as you're looking at it i believe and uh, that's in a six foot eight. I'm six foot, six foot one ish. If, if I stand up straight or whatever, but six foot eight interior height, all aluminum. I would absolutely recommend getting at least a six foot six, six foot eight, or even seven foot height. Um, it's your, you'll be way better off for it for sure. Uh, the drawers are 19 inches deep. You'll see the drawers. Um, that's going to be on the driver's side and on the um, passenger side. The long drawers are eight foot deep because they obviously have you, know, you have you can run it the entire length of a sheet of plywood. Uh, there is uh, solar, 3000 watt pure sign inverter, powers everything in the trailer, 110 volt, and I have uh, six deep cycle batteries, 115 amp hours each for uh, power source, 330 watt solar panel on the roof, uh, MPV charge controller. That's basically the gist of it for that. Uh, I've got enough, uh, I got you know, obviously 3000 watts, so it's enough to run anything I have corded. Paint sprayer, uh, tile saws, I've ran it all. All my tools that I have that are quartered off of this inverter, it works just fine, no problem. But it's mainly charging batteries. I run almost all completely cordless operation. So charging my batteries, charging whatever else I need is the main thing. And obviously lighting. Here we are, we are running off the batteries completely right now. We, I'll show you here in a second because this is a reason why I like having to be able to flip a switch. And, you know, not having to plug into uh, the customer's power source just to be able to turn my lights on at a minimum, let alone flipping an inverter on to charge my batteries too. So a couple things, the solar is not going to basically completely eliminate shore power. I can do, I can hook up shore power to charge my battery bank. Uh, it's just a trickle charger to keep, you know, it's right now it's powering the lights. Um, if I just did lighting, the, the solar panel, as far as being spring here, uh, in Michigan is sufficient, but as, as far as anything else, it's just a trickle charger. Uh, the trailer weight is about 6,200 pounds. Maybe it could probably go up to 64, down to six 6,000 pounds, depending on what I have in here. So it is a 7,000 pound rated aluminum trailer, tandem axle, dual brakes, ramp door in the back. We've got the side door back here. Uh, that's, you know, it's, I absolutely would recommend get you guys a ramp door and a side door, even though I know um, this is all built out Ron Pollock style. He has, you guys check out his channel. He's got great content. That's, you know, I could, you know, as far as his tr tool trailers, he's definitely the, the go-to for all this kind of stuff. Will this work for everybody? Absolutely not. Uh, that's why, you know, I modified it from his original design. We recommend it. His plans are very cheap for what you get and they're very detailed. I would highly recommend just Google or search on YouTube, Ron Polk. And he's got a, he's got a great store. Definitely check him out because that's, it's, that's why, you know, it's, it's great ideas. I wouldn't have built this out. I wouldn't have had all these ideas for sure. So I'm trying to think of anything else I need to talk about before we go into the um, actual overview of the trailer. But I think we're pretty good as far as everything else. Let's roll with it. All right, enough talking. So let's go through it all. This is the long part, right? So, all right. Let's get the camera focused in. All right, eight foot drawers. Again, this is new from the other uh, Ultimate Tool Trailer video. Did this because, for one, I could get so this one needs to be readjusted. But I can get my big paint trays in there as well, plus an additional storage. So I had plenty to plenty of space to work with. Glides are done with a little bit of wax. We got electrical, we got plumbing, and we got just demo and concrete tools and everything like that. So pretty similar. They slide really nice. I do like them. 
for a nice little uh, little trick there for sure. Um, you got your long you got your long storage in here. I just keep a bunch of my uh, tough system uh, saw horses. Actually, I need to return those, but and then some just debris and some small stuff there with the uh, dust wall poles and everything like that. That actually doesn't even need to goes over here. It must have fell down somewhere. Anyways. We got two foot, three foot, which is not there, four foot, six foot, and then an eight foot levels. They're either all on the job site or somewhere else. We're on a job site right now. So that is it for this. And then we just have additional eight foot storage for poles and additional stuff. We got glow rods, everything on there. So I used I used to have the power supply there for the uh, the shore power, but obviously deleted that. We'll get to that in a second. On the driver's side. You got your your basic uh, charging, not basic charging, but your charging system here. Three Milwaukee's, Festool, Matabo, and Makita duels. So let's take a step back so you guys can see that. We'll go ahead and turn on the inverter here in a second, but you guys can see how these work. But it, they are, you know, you get the fans working and everything, so it's a little noisy. Small stuff. This is just accumulates everything. Everything I need to get you know, pencils. I gotta put some more uh, dividers in here, kind of like I have like right here. I just got to put some more in there, that way it keeps it nice and even. Got magnets on the back here, keeps some small bits and everything. Cock uh, storage right up there, gaps, all that good stuff. So just kind of accumulation of stuff, like a quick access. And we do have, on the back end here, we do have USB and um, 110 volt, just in case I need to run any power, you know, power anything out from the back of the trailer. Uh, the 110 here is just for charging. I mean, you can see I have my, my one of my, my work phone here. And... Um, the entire uh, charging system runs off that, which runs down to here. That's how I have it built in. Battery storage, just like this. I'll have little LED lights, just like that, so I can see. Not a big deal. And back on the passenger side, we got small tool, uh, hand tool storage. I have my other Vito blackout bag in my truck. I keep it there. This is my electrical, um, and then low voltage up there. Polk uh, station with my miter station with the wings that go inside with the 12-inch Makita. And we also have the table saw. I don't have my other Polk workbench here. I, I, if I need the table saw, I know in advance, I can bring it and lay it in the aisle itself. Um, going back to the drawers, pretty simple. Uh, these are nails and all the kind of small stuff here. These are for my Polk workbench, stuff like that. We work out of this every day. Like you can see, we're, we're on a job site right now. So I'm just making this video while I can. And you got more nails. Framing, you know, you get dividers, all that good stuff. Let's see if I can get this with one hand because it's kind of heavy. There we go. And we got down we got blade storage. So we got your recip recipes, 10, 7 and quarters. And I only have one extra 12 inch blade, which is right there. And that's all I have in there. Uh, we've got caulking, drywall tools, stuff like that in here. Paint, we got the um, dust wall pads, just miscellaneous stuff. We got paint sprayer, nozzles, tape drawer. Here's your tape. And then HDMI cords. And the same thing for low voltage. We got more low voltage down here. So just some stuff that we really never use. Probably will eventually just uh, get rid of all of it. But for right now it's here. We got the drawer that accumulates everything. We got my batteries back here. We got C's, D's, nine volts, all that good stuff. So just a, just a miscellaneous drawer of crap. And then we've got some 12 volt um, miscellaneous stuff here. Just I use a lot of this just to wire the trailer. Sandpaper drawer. So we've got your sandpaper. So we can't get this back in there. And I don't think we got anything else down here. So yeah, just some wireless HDMI, basic stuff. And down there is my you know third hand, all that stuff. So. Going back up, this is awesome. It hasn't changed much. I do need to fix over here because it, um, sorry, fix over there because it does, it shifted a little bit and I need to make my little divider wide enough. Impacts, nail guns up top here. As you can see, nail guns, miter, uh, not miter, uh, Makita, track saw, Festool, Milwaukee, rear handles, uh, sawzaws, we've got no. Oh, See, a lot of tools are missing because they're on the job sites and more impacts, drills, all the good stuff, router, more bits and pieces, 
planer, sander, jigsaw, grinder, another oscillating tool, lights. Uh, we've got uh, I don't know a mechanic tool, but a ratchet. We've got uh, down here. Took this out from the last video, so I have bigger bulk storage, trash bin, uh, vacuums, uh, and then we've got the compressor down there with the pivot ladder buddy right there. We've got this little tray. We've got two of these the light uh, towers plus additional storage for toilet, uh, not toilet paper, but uh, paper towels, all that good stuff. Uh, microwave, we got tools, storage. This is going to be moved out because it, it failed. It, it didn't. It didn't work out the way I wanted it to. But um, you know, we got your basic stuff in here as well. Uh, and then the front's pretty much a cluster. Still is. You know, you got your chemicals and your other stuff. And the front, for for sure, is a cluster. I just keep. You know, I've been wiring the trailer, so we keep everything out. Uh, it's it's here if I need it. But at the same time, you know, stuff breaks. Like I got one of my. One of my little um, YouTube microphones, but you can see it snapped right there. So, but yeah, this is all just a cluster. Got the white, the dry erase board for anything I need to uh, remember. And then we've got all the receipts, code book, tools. <laughs> we can do this down here. Uh, and these are all I keep these separate for each job. So, if a different customer gets a different file for keeping everything organized, um, they got light light bulbs up there as well. Down here, we've got bulk storage as well, plumbing tools, uh, Makita laser, fan, bigger tools, bandsaw, whole hog, another circular saw, more lighting. Everything's up there as well. Um, we'll go behind me now. Right behind me, you can see we got the small bits and piece storage. This is fantastic. I won't change this for anything. Uh, I know organize a little different, but we got everything in here. I'll link in the video for my prior videos too. I, I go through most of these right now and you can see, I'm not gonna go through them because it's just small, you know, fasteners, small things, pretty much everything you need a small piece for. So, I mean, we can go through one real quick. Let's, let's just do uh, long fasteners and self tappers. So, let's take this one out real quick. So, it's, so you can see, got some small stuff. Not, nothing's all, none of them are all real full, but at the same time, I got room for improvement, room for space, all that good stuff. So paper towel up there. I will say I do have uh, track saw storage. We got your, I think this is a 52 inch track. I forget what that one is, but that's a 50 inch track. And then we got the 118 inch track here. It goes all the way to there. So that is it for that. We've got your masks, little headlamps there as well. Um, and then lighting, all oh, this is lighting. This is a puck light. This actually doesn't turn on when you need it to. I um, mean, you have to turn it on because it does. It does eat a little more juice. So I have it on a separate. You know, you just touch it to, if you actually want the extra light for this little work area. So now let's get to the um, electrical here. Lighting switch. This is the new. Stays on. I have not seen actually any any draw for this power staying on at all. It, it's it's it, it doesn't use much at all, if, if any. So I do have. Your battery bank down here, we've got 115 amp XC batteries. These are deep cycle, I've got six of them. So you can see all the way back in there, there's six of them. We've got a uh, two watt wire for negative and positive, feeding my inverter, and then the inverter. Well, we'll get back to this in a second. Lighting, obviously the first toggle is your main lights. So you can see if I want that light back on, all I have to do is touch it and I got extra light if I need it. So, and then Second, second switch is your basically your secondary lights. So for right here, for right here, and then down here. So there you go. So inverter, 3000 watt Ames pure sign inverter. We've got the remote switch up here. So all I gotta do is turn that baby on. You can probably hear the battery bank start up. Might ding at us or not, who knows. Um, so it's you're live, you're good to go. Uh, there's solar on the roof which we'll get to in a second so you get your MPPT charge controller right here the lights on top means we're actually getting juice from the solar panel and it's giving it to the battery bank we've got your 50 amp service right there two breakers one for the microwave itself and the rest of them for the rest of the trailer 12 volt uh, fuse panel right there for everything going into the pan everything is fused everything is fused and then we've got um, we got our shunt we got our 300 amp fuse right there and we've got our battery disconnect right here. So if I just turn this, then everything goes away because it just turns the it disconnects the battery itself. 
that's all we have for up here, guys. That's pretty much it. I just don't, I need to get the we got lighting up here, but I need to get some better tape on this one because it's not coming. It's coming down. So, and the MP, MPP charge controller is Bluetooth, so I can just check with my phone and see what I'm bringing in for volts, juice, and watt hours. That way, I don't actually have to cycle through this and take a look at it. That's why it's down here. I don't need I don't need to see it every time. So. That's it for this, you guys. That's as far as I got for the electrical system. It's been working out just just fine. I only had this up for about nine, ten days, but we're we're working out just fine. Now we're going to go back to. So now you can see everything's on, working good. So we can take that one off, chuck it in there. The dead batteries come up here. Boom. So. Oh, is that one? Yeah, we're good on that. So that's red. Everything's working. We're all we're walking off that. So that's that's pretty much it. We're running off my battery bank, charging everything I need to. Everything's hot. See. Everything's hot. That's all there is to it. We're not plugged into anything from any any house. No no cords or anything like that. So we'll go outside here. I will say I do have a monitor up here. See it right here. It's face. It's face level because of the the angle. It's L LED LCD. You can see we're at 12.2 volts right now with everything on. So 12.1, 12.2. We're fluctuating. So we don't want to go between below 12.0 because that means we're at 50%, which we don't want to damage the batteries because they are lead acid. That's all I have for here. Let's go outside real quick. We got shore power. So. Inverter is a charger as well, so I can connect shore power and then the inverter itself will relay that power into the, the batteries themselves and charge my battery bank. And then our solar panel, 330 watt single. Now that's going to eventually go above. You can see what the top of the uh, ladder rack is and then we'll put a little mounting uh, pieces of aluminum up there, mount it above if I need to, but right now it's there, easy, uh, 330 watts. All there is to it. I mean, zip tie down underneath with a little grommet so it doesn't, you know, doesn't rub itself and create a, you know, an arc, ground, all that good stuff. So well, that is it for the trailer. We already went over all the specs on it. Any other information? Uh, that is all I've got for this little tour. I appreciate it. Let me know what you guys would do different in the comment section below. Um, likes, dislikes. Let me know if I can, you know, room for improvement. You can see that right there. I need to fix that one right there. But uh, so far, so good. Liking it. Staying off grid. Don't need to charge up too much. Um, with the solar panel, it's actually been working out fine. It has completely replaced any usage for lighting I needed, for sure. But we'll see how it does with the uh, um, the inverter because that's where it's going to use the most. All right, guys. Like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. All right. So another reason why I got the battery bank and everything is because you can see how far we are away from the house. I'm not backing up way up there right now, but I can still charge anything I need to, flip on the inverter, and we, we're, we're good to go. So that's one of the reasons I don't need to run an extension cord. I don't need to keep 100 foot of an extension cord on the trailer. I can just flip the switch and we're good to go. So turn the lights on and then turn the inverter on. And we should be starting up. There we go. So fans will kick on. We've got, we got juice.